Hi folks, my name is Josh Carlisle, and thanks for joining me. I'm a Microsoft MVP in Azure, uh, based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, here on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, for my day job, I'm on the AppDynamics team uh, at Cisco, where I'm the global Azure lead uh, for the cloud team. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to sharing all the awesomeness uh, that is Azure Static Web Apps, uh, because I know firsthand really what a tricky endeavor uh, building modern websites can be. Uh, at the end of the day, there is a lot of cross-cutting concerns uh, that can add to, really, to a lot of complexity. Uh, first announced back at Build 2020, uh, Azure Static Web Apps is really intended to solve a lot of those common pain points around building modern websites. Uh, but before I go ahead and attempt to rock your world around Azure Static Web Apps, I did want to make a quick shout out to uh, Gregor and Richard uh, for bringing together all this awesome content uh, from really, really awesome folks from all around the world. Uh, and just as importantly, I wanted to wish everybody a safe and happy holiday. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. So before we get started talking about Azure Static Web Apps, let's level set a bit and talk about what I mean by modern web apps, because I realize that folks could really define them in different ways. To me, modern web apps are commonly defined by the current generation of popular JavaScript frameworks, things like Angular, React, Vue.js. And of course, this list is not meant to be exhaustive. Uh, along the way, though, static website generators, things like Gatsby and Hugo, really also join in the mix. Uh, but most recently, and also emerging in popularity, is WebAssembly, and in particular for us .NET fans out there, guilty, uh, uh, Blazor as well. Now, what do all of these have in common? Well, at the end of the day, whether we're talking uh, you know, a JavaScript framework, static site generators, or WebAssembly, they all become static assets. Uh, put in the most simple terms, everything runs in the user's browser. We don't have any need for those you know, traditional server-side rendering that we have for classic web applications, things like ASP.NET and Java. Now, this really has the potential to greatly simplify how we build websites today, and that can also translate to additional savings, you know, reduce complexity, because we no longer need beefy web servers to share up essentially static content. Now, unfortunately, as much as it would be great at this point in time to declare really victory and hit that easy button, right? It turns out that we still have a lot of things left that we need to think about when it comes to building modern websites. Well, it turns out beyond your website itself, regardless of how you've developed it, you still have a lot of other concerns that you almost universally need to think about. Although modern websites you know, are often built very differently than your classic sites, it doesn't negate the need for source control. So you're going to need to have a source control solution. You're also going to want to take advantage of CI/CD to ensure really that your websites can be deployed really easily. And along the same lines, you want an easy way to have a staging environment so you can really preview your changes. Now, most sites also need some sort of identity management solution you know, for the users on the site to be able to log into, for example. But, you know, outside very simplistic sites, and almost really without exception, most websites will be driven in part by a backend APIs that support your site and, you know, do things like provide access to those backend databases. You know, there's also a lot of backend glue for sites to talk to those APIs, things like handling cores configuration. You also inevitably have different types of users, so you're going to need some sort of way of providing authorization and managing those roles in the site. Uh, sites also inevitably have custom domains, and they have SSL certificates to deal with. And lastly, you're going to want to make sure that the users really of your site are having a great experience, regardless of where they are in the globe. You, know, you really can't beat the speed of light, which means you need to think about geodistribution of the site. And as you can imagine, all this adds up to a lot of complexity. And this is really where the total awesomeness of Azure Static Web Apps really comes into play. They offer a way to build and deploy and host static web apps. They integrate with GitHub for source control. Uh, and the intelligence in GitHub Actions take care of all the CICD and handling those staging environments. Uh, it also integrates with Azure Functions, which is a natural fit really for providing API and the API glue. And that entire site can be integrated with common identity providers like Twitter, like Google, Facebook, while also providing really that layer of authorization as well. 
Now, for those of you from already familiar with Azure, you might be saying to yourself, wait, I, I can do all this today, which is true. But what makes this all truly awesome is that the ease of which of all these services are provided and integrated into a nice package uh, on an already proven infrastructure available on Azure. Now, what does this all look like in practice? Well, you have a repo in GitHub that contains your code for your site and your API if you have one. When the code is committed or we have a pull request, it will trigger our GitHub action that was created for us automatically by Azure Static Web Apps. The GitHub action will take care of all the details around building and the deployment of the site itself. So it's going to do things like deploy that static content. And if you have the APIs, it's going to deploy your APIs as well. Now, all of this will automatically be geo-replicated around the planet as well. But let's go ahead and dig into some of the more of the details and see if we can see some of this in action. So to get started, we're going to need a couple things. Uh, first off, we're going to need a GitHub repo. Uh, I've gone ahead and created one for myself. Uh, and the second one thing that we'll need is an actual site. So we, of course, have several different options. Uh, and if we view the, uh, the documentation for Azure Static Web Apps, we can see there's lots of great tutorials of how to work with different ones. We're just going to keep it simple, and we're going to build a website based on Blazor. Now, I've already gone ahead and created a little bit of a folder structure. This folder structure is by convention. I have an API folder and a client folder. Uh, you'll find that having a separate API and client folder in a structure like this uh, is beneficial, and it usually keeps things nice and simple. Uh, the, uh, the UI is obviously going to go in the client folder, and when we do build it, the API will be in the API folder. Now, because I'm building a, a Blazor site, we're going to keep things simple and just use the command line to build the Blazor site. So we'll go ahead and choose .NET new and then Blazor WASM. Make sure you use Blazor WASM and not just the other one that's server side. And as you can see here, we now have our Blazor site. Uh, now, we just want to make sure this actually works. So we'll just do .NET run and ensure that our site is working properly. So go to HPS. And there we go. We have our nice vanilla Blazor site. So at this point in time, you will likely have and want to build something more sophisticated than a hello world. Uh, but just for the purposes of this demo, we're going to keep it simple and stick with the whole wor hello world. Uh, the next step that we'll need to go through is ensure that we have uh, our source in our repo uh, so that we then can go ahead and jump onto Azure and build out an Azure Static Web App and wire things in. Now, through the magic of demos, uh, I've already gone ahead and uh, uploaded and committed uh, the source code to our GitHub repo. So if we do a refresh here, we will see I have our, our GitHub repo uh, with our client folder and our Blazor application in there. So our next step is going to be to go ahead and create our Azure Static Web App within an Azure subscription uh, and go ahead and see some of this in action. So moving over to the Azure portal, uh, we have a existing festive tech resource group. We're going to go ahead and add a new Azure Static Web App resource to that group. And as you note, this uh, this is still at the time of this recording is still in preview. So once we've created that, we are going to go ahead and give it a name. Now, if you're uh, used to Azure, Azure Web Apps, uh, where the name has to be globally unique, uh, that is not the case here. This is simply a label. So we can say this should be the festive tech site. Now, we do have some limits on the regions we can choose from. Uh, this is currently in preview. Uh, um, the assumption here is that uh, as this goes, GA will be available in addition in additional regions, uh, probably eventually all, I would guess. So we'll go ahead and pick something close to me on the East Coast. Uh, and it is currently free. Um, I am assuming, that once again, that it is not going to be forever free. Uh, but knowing some of the underlying uh, infrastructure that Azure Static Web Apps utilizes, things like 
Azure Functions uh, are generally very affordable. Uh, so my expectation here is it'll be fairly low cost, but we'll wait and see what they say. Uh, we also need to wire this to our GitHub account. Uh, one of the questions I frequently get is whether this is available for other types of source control. And currently it is GitHub uh, only. Uh, the, um, the, the team that supports uh, Azure Static Web Apps has uh, made uh, mention publicly that uh, they are considering also adding uh, support in the future for Azure DevOps as well. So we'll go ahead and sign into our repo, and I will likely um, hide this from folks, but I'm going to go ahead and authorize uh, the use of this. There we go. So now that that is authorized, uh, we're going to go ahead and choose our organization, which is going to be my GitHub repo org. And we also have that private repo that we created, the Azure Static Web App private repo. So we're going to use that. And then we have our main branch. Now, following this, we have a few other questions. Now, currently, it's required to tell uh, the configuration what type of static web app uh, that we are deploying. Uh, so, for example, we're deploying a Vue or a Gatsby or Hugo. Uh, at some point in the future, uh, the team has also expressed that they have some interest in making this more intelligent uh, so that you actually don't have to select anything. It just knows uh, based on the contents of your repo. Uh, but as of today, we have to choose. So, of course, we created a Blazor app, so we're going to go ahead and choose Blazor. Uh, now, one thing I will call out is that you, you, you noticed I mentioned earlier uh, that there's that convention of client API, and that's where actually this comes from. Uh, so the app location is going to look in the client folder, the API location, if we had it, would look in the API. And the app artifact location would be, uh, uh, is where when an application is compiled uh, locally, whatever, whatever build it goes through, rather, uh, uh, and those static assets are built, where they are located at. And it's going to be different depending on whether it's Blazor or Gatsby or wherever it may be. Uh, it tries to make some intelligent guesses to the typical defaults for those, but everybody can mess with their builds if they want to. So be aware of this if you have, if you have changed the defaults and you're using one of the other uh, one of the other frameworks that you may have to make some adjustments to this. WW root is good for Blazor. Now, the one thing, and this has caught me in the past, and it looks like it caught me again, so I'm kind of glad it did this. Uh, these locations are case sensitive. And if we were to go back to my source control, you'll see that we used client and API lowercase. So we need to make sure that we update this or we will get an error on our first deploy. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, at, the, at some point in time, we could actually preview the workflow file. We're going to do that later because it's actually going to generate it for us, and we'll preview that over in GitHub. So let's go ahead and review and create. And as it's going ahead and deploying this, as the deployment's in progress, this is generally speaking fairly quickly, uh, but we're going to go back to it. It's already deployed, so we're going to go ahead and go to that resource. Uh, now, we have several different options here, but the one thing that I found uh, interesting the first time I saw this was uh, uh, that for all the features this has, there isn't a lot of configuration. And I think that's generally a good thing, right? This is meant to simplify your experience uh, when you're deploying modern uh, web applications. Uh, my guess here is that if you start needing to get into advanced configuration scenarios, uh, that you're probably just going to roll your own site on Azure App Services or Azure Functions directly. Uh, uh, and where you have a lot more control over it. The idea behind this is to make things really, really simple. Uh, now, we could go ahead and edit the, the, the workflow. Now, if you recall, this is actually using a, uh, a GitHub action, which is a, a YAML file definition. We're going to take a look at that momentarily. Uh, but it's also created a nice friendly URL for us. Uh, sometimes it's kind of amusing what it, the words it creates here. Uh, we, of course, could wire this into a custom domain. I've already done so for a personal site of mine for one of my blogs. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward. We won't be doing it for, for this demo. Uh, but we have a few different options here. We're going to hit on some of these options when we come back and after we start deploying some, some apps, some APIs. We'll see some things under functions. But the one thing I do want to call it right away is environments. So if we go to environments here, we see that we have a production and staging. So we already have that concept of a, of a staging environment, a preview environment. And I'll show how that actually works momentarily. But we're going to stick with the main deploy at first. So as we can see here, we're actually waiting for deployment and we can browse over. Now, if I go back to my GitHub repo and I go back to the root of the repo, you'll see now that we have this GitHub workflow, uh, 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 workflow folder. 
And if we open this up, we can see we have a new file in here. This was actually generated for us by Azure Static Web Apps. And if we open up that YAML file, this is the build process, right? So uh, this is a one and done, right? So it's going to go ahead and create this for us. Uh, if we need to, if we want to have a custom build, want to add some additional features, some additional steps, uh, we can totally own this uh, and, and make edits to it. It just uses the out-of-the-box uh, GitHub actions. Uh, but it's very convenient. This is automatically created for us, and it just works. Uh, now, if we go back to uh, our Actions menu, we can see here that we have an action. Uh, this was actually created for us uh, and automatically initiated when we, when we did our deploy. So if we go back to the Azure site here and we do a quick refresh, we can see that we're ready to go. But before we take a look at the site, let's go and see what's going on inside there. So if we open this up, we can see that we have several tasks within here. Of interest are some of the build and deploys. Uh, if you're familiar with Blazor, it's going through some of the normal build and deploys, .NET version, so on and so forth. Uh, but we can go through here. This is the place where we would go if we were having problems with our deploy. Uh, for example, if I forgot to uh, not, if I left that client capitalized, this is the place where we could go where we could find out you know, what went on in our build, what, what went wrong. Uh, but let's go ahead and go back to our website here and go ahead and go back to our overview. There we go. And let's see our site in action. Now, as you can see here, uh, fairly quickly, right, uh, within, a, within a couple minutes of deployment and, and having our, our application deployed, we have a working and running website. Um, but let's go ahead and take this a, a step further. And let's go through the sequence of events if we wanted to actually uh, make some edits to this. And, and we wanted to make this edits through a pull request so that we could uh, have a preview, a staging environment available to us so that we can preview some of our changes. Okay, so returning back to GitHub here, we're going to switch gears and let's go ahead and make a minor edit. Now, of course, I could do this through Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's just a little bit more involved uh, to do the pull request, but we're going to keep things simple and go ahead and go to our Blazor app and choose Pages. And let's make a minor edit here and let's see how this works. So if I open up and say Hello World, um, and let's go ahead and edit this page, and we'll call Hello World V2. So obviously this is simulating that you're, you have some sort of edit. We'd like to be able to preview this edit first uh, before we push it into production. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, so make a commit change, but we're going to we're actually going to do a pull request. We're going to say, you know, please approve, right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and propose the change, and we're going to create the pull request. Okay, so we have this now. We're 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 waiting on this. So we have a pull request here, and we're actually waiting on something. Now. Uh, you'll notice here that we, uh, if we go over to our actions, that we have another workflow running. And if we open up this workflow, we will see things going on in action. Now, this is going to behave a little bit of a, a little bit differently because it is a pull request. Uh, it's actually going to go ahead and create us a staging site. Now, there are some limitations during the current preview. Uh, I believe at the time of this recording, we're still limited to just one staging site. Uh, once again, uh, the team uh, that manages Azure Static Web Apps has mentioned that uh, I think there are plans to be able to have some more uh, flexibility for that. Uh, but uh, it's uh, right now we're just limited to one. So while this is building, we're going to go ahead and switch gears and go back over to our site and go to environments. Now we don't have an environment yet here. Wait, we're waiting on this because it's actually creating it for us right now. So we'll pause for a second and wait for this to pop. Okay, so through the magic of recorded demos, we can see here now uh, that we have a new uh, environment available to us. It's a staging environment. Uh, so if we go ahead and uh, preview this environment, we can choose Browse, and we can see that we're working on V2. Now, uh, the site is obviously a little bit different, but the one thing to call out for this is the URL is different as well. Uh, so if we go back to our V1 site, and then we go back to, oops, 
So if you, if you catch that, we have a dash one here. And so we have a preview site. So this becomes very, very handy, obviously, uh, for previewing changes to your site. And we didn't have to do a lot of work here. We didn't really have to do any work. It just got created for us. Now, the natural course of events here at this point in time is that we want to approve this. So, and we want V2 incorporated, because it looks great, right? Incorporated into our production site. So if we go back to our pull request, and we update our pull request and say, yep, we're all good to go. And at this point in time, it has now gone and triggered, once again, uh, another action for us. But this time, it's actually going to merge us back into production. So if we go back to our site now, and we'll pause momentarily. So at this point in time, we'll go ahead and refresh again. And we can see our staging environment is gone, uh, and that we now have it got, gone ahead and deployed uh, to production. So if we go ahead and back and refresh production, we see we now our V2. So with very little effort, none on our part, we we're able to get a fully functional, functional CI CD pipeline, uh, easily integrated with our code base, uh, deploying staging environments and preview environments, merging back into production uh, with, with, with no effort. Uh, so moving on, let's go ahead and explore uh, some of the API features of Azure Static Web Apps. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. Now I've already gone ahead and made a few updates to support an API. Now there's a few considerations when it comes to using APIs with Azure Static Web Apps. Uh, we have uh, currently three languages available to us. Uh, initially, uh, with the initial release of Azure Static Web Apps, we had just Node available to us. Uh, but as of uh, Ignite this year, we also have uh, .NET and Python available to us as well. Uh, another limitation when using Azure Static Web Apps with Azure Functions is that the only triggers that are supported are HTTP triggers. Uh, so there is not support for additional triggers. Now all the bindings will work just as you would expect. Uh, so you can still bind to various messaging platforms. Uh, but from a triggering standpoint, only HTTP triggers are available. Uh, there is some discussion on whether additional triggers will be ma made available. Obviously, when it comes to building Azure Static Web Apps uh, and building websites in general, those HTTP, those HTTP triggers are the most important ones. Now, I've gone ahead and added some features, an uh, enhancement to our existing app, uh, our existing Hello World app, to be able to support uh, weather. Uh, so there is a public weather API, and I wanted to make sure that our Blazor app could make a call to our API, which then calls the public API. Kind of a very common-ish scenario. Uh, so if I go ahead and open up my API folder, I've used the Azure Functions core tools uh, to go ahead and create the scaffolding for a new Azure function for me. And I've created a, uh, an HTTP trigger uh, for, uh, called uh, Forecast. And, and this calls an external API, as you can see here, the apiweather.gov, uh, and does some, some, gives you back some weather uh, based on some information. Uh, now, uh, we have some additional uh, elements to this as well. We have a model that kind of supports uh, uh, some of the uh, JSON that's going to be passed back and forth. Uh, I also kind of have a, have a shared common library as well. Uh, don't get too caught up in some of the details here. Uh, the takeaway here is that I have deployed an Azure function, in this case a .NET Azure function, uh, to the API folder, and I have made some updates uh, to uh, my website to be able to support that. Uh, so let's go ahead and commit these changes in, and let's see what results we get within the Azure Static Web App. So let's go ahead and open up. And we could take this from a couple of different directions. Uh, but I'm going to start this from looking at the actions uh, within our GitHub repo. And we can see that uh, we now have a new workflow executing. 
and that workflow is going to be deploying our application. Now as before, we're seeing a lot of output here. I'm actually going to come back to this here in a moment. Let's go ahead and see if it has registered yet on our static web administration site. And it still has not yet. So our build is now complete and has been successful. If we go back to our site, let's see if we can see a time difference change, and which we have. So it's a half hour later here. And let's go ahead and see if we have some functions registered. And we now, we now have a forecast function. Uh, so once again, a fairly simplistic interface. Uh, but if we go back to our user interface, we now have a fetch data menu item where it is loading up a weather forecast for us. Uh, and we were able to complete all this. We didn't have to handle uh, any cores configuration. Um, Azure Static Web Apps took care of that cores configuration. So our, our front end API talking to, uh, I'm sorry, our front end website talking to our Azure function, everything was all taken care of for us. So this was intended to be a bit of a tease for Azure Static Web Apps. But what's left that I didn't really cover? Well, first off, routes are important to understand. Routes are defined within a JSON file, and they cover some of the back-end routing rules and authorization behavior, which really goes hand-in-hand -hand with the identity, identity and authorization features, which I really didn't cover either. Now, if you're curious about learning more about either of these subjects, I would really recommend reviewing the documentation. Uh, you can also check back after the first of the year, and I plan to have some additional video content uh, that includes coverage specifically of these topics on my new YouTube channel, Azure Elements. So a few parting thoughts. Um, you know, I believe Azure Static Web Apps has a ton of potential. You know, it's still in preview, so it will be interesting to see how it evolves. Uh, you know, I don't believe it will ever be a enterprise solution. I just don't see some of the features, especially around routes, identity, and authorization scaling, you know, purely from a management perspective. But I don't think that's the intended audience for Azure Static Web Apps anyway. Uh, there are some gaps and some questions I have, but I'm sure liking the direction that things are going. So uh, what's coming down the pipe? Well, uh, based on some public comments uh, from the PMs from the team, uh, they've had a lot of requests for support for Azure DevOps uh, as opposed to just you know GitHub. Uh, so uh, that's something that looks like they'll be investigating. Uh, adding support for Apex domains is a pretty common ask. Uh, they also want to look into support for custom auth apps. Uh, this wasn't shown in today's demos, uh, but right now when you uh, use uh, a third-party uh, identity provider, someone like Facebook, uh, you don't have a lot of control over the authentication app that you use. They want to be able to, to provide that. Uh, they're looking into some potential trigger support, additional trigger support beyond just HTTP. Uh, there are some current storage capacity limits. Uh, I believe they may have already increased these. Uh, these only really come into play uh, for, uh, for folks who I think are deploying some Node.js Node based, uh, um, based APIs or they have very large static web apps that are greater than 50 megabytes. Uh, but they're going to be increasing storage capacity if they haven't already. Uh, they're also investigating uh, additional uh, support for the local development experience. Uh, things like uh, um, a local emulator to help out some of the authentication use cases uh, and just additional tooling. Also, I recommend following these, these folks as well if you want to learn some more about Azure Static Web Apps uh, and hear the latest announcements and see the latest news around them. Uh, both Anthony Burke and Daria all have great content out there uh, talking about Azure Static Web Apps. And if you have any questions for me, uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter at, at Josh Carlisle or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed uh, learning more about Azure Static Web Apps, and I hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable holiday.